Hi, my name is Zach Benoit, and we are here today to talk about the MSU B Foundation and Billings Clinic Science Expo. Um, we've got a couple of folks from MSU Billings here to, to talk with us, so I'll, I'll let you guys introduce yourselves and we'll go from there. Hi, I'm Tiffany, the Foundation and Alumni Marketing Coordinator. And I'm Vonda Lancaster, and I'm the Acting Director for the Science Expo this year. So let's start with just the, the, the basics here. Talk a little bit about this year's Science Expo, some of those basic details, when it is, what it's going to include, those kinds of things. I'll let you start, Tiffany. Go ahead. You got Perfect. the date. You got the dates <laughs> in your head. <laughs> well, we're very excited because this year's Science Expo is coming up before you know it. It's going to be on March 23rd and 24th. Mm -hmm. Uh, we invite the students and their families up at 1 p.m. on the 23rd, and we conclude after an award ceremony at about 5 p.m. the 24th, but we've really got a great lineup of activities outside of just the, the science fair. Mm -hmm. um, and I know Vonda can speak to a little bit about an excellent guest speaker that we're inviting to campus and some of the entertainment events that people can expect by participating. Yeah, we have Greg Beals, who is a senior high teacher, who is a 2015 National National Teachers Award winner. He also did a documentary and he's going to present that documentary in that film on Friday afternoon in the uh, library building 148 uh, for students and their um, parents and that's will be right before the judging gets started so it gives them a little break once they get set up and they can go over there and and watch his video and then he'll have a question and answer we also have another program that's just kind of um, I have not seen it before but I just gotta ask for some money because they need nitro no it's not really nitro it's a <laughs> It's a chemistry <laughs> show, but um, so there, that'll be happening too on the main floor in the gym. Um, the we're trying to get the uh, science departments involved at, and that's one reason for bringing the event to MSU Billings. <clears throat> And so this, the students this year at the chemistry department are going to be putting on a chemistry show. So that'll be happening as well. And then we have the finale is the awards uh, ceremony. And that'll be happening on Saturday afternoon. And that'll be in, um, I always say the name, Sissel Hall? Sissel Hall? Sissel Hall. Sissel mm -hmm. Hall. Said it right. <laughs> um, and so we try to make this a positive experience mm -hmm. for every child, whether you're in first grade or you're maybe in that senior class and mm -hmm. you're looking to take your, your project maybe to the national fair, um, try to reward them. Um, whether it's a medallion or whether it's a ribbon or maybe it's just a, a certificate or we do have financial um, uh, awards to give as well for those top winners in the categories mm -hmm. and so that will conclude our um, uh, science Expo and that again will be in the afternoon on the uh, 24th so outside of the kids with their with their projects there's a lot of other things going on yeah uh, and absolutely. you mentioned you mentioned the a documentary that uh, that Craig Beals was involved in C do you know a little a little bit of the details on, yeah. on what that intent you know I went on YouTube because it's on YouTube <laughs> and well, I watched it spoil it for everybody and it, uh, right. um, yeah, it's the inside of the earth. It deals with the inside of the earth and volcanoes, mm -hmm. which I have grandchildren. And let me tell you, that's a big deal when you're five, six years old, those volcanoes. <laughs> so um, I believe it was on the Discovery Channel. I could be wrong on that. So um, it's a great presentation. And mm -hmm. to have him live, my grandson out in Tacoma wants to come and get his <laughs> autograph. I mean, it's kind of a big deal that mm -hmm. we would have somebody in our community um, with that type of recognition mm -hmm. that can do that for for us. And because he's also, I mean, he's, he's really well known for some of his presentations, demonstrations that he does right. uh, with students, not just in Billings, but around town, uh, around around kind of our, our region here. Um, is he going to be doing any of any of that at this at the Science Expo? Is just, we just have him booked in that one spot just right one now. Spot. Okay. And um, who knows where that will lead. But, but he's very well known. I mean, people, yeah. people around here know him because of a lot of these things that he does. And I want to say that he hand delivered all of his senior high projects to me to the office so so yeah he he he, li he practices and he lives what he practices so sure. th they're involved as well okay absolutely yeah and so the science expo has been going on in the community for 30 gosh, years 30 years now um can you just talk a little bit about its its place because i remember as a kid I, growing up here in billings 
participating in the science expo. I had a paper air airplane project. I did not win. No. Nope. But uh, it's, but I remember that so clearly being involved, being able to do these things. So can you talk a little bit about just its its place in the community and its history here? Absolutely. Well, 30 years is a long time, <laughs> and certainly. Um, I think that's one of the great things that uh, MSU Billings was excited about when mm -hmm. we took on co-producing the event this year. And mm -hmm. first of all, it's great because it kind of is a natural tie into our support of STEM. And mm -hmm. for those of you who don't know what STEM is, it's sciences, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And so um, we, we've got some great educators in this community, and it's a huge regional event as well. So mm -hmm. there are 24 different counties um, that are participating in and um, that's a great representation of the young minds that are coming together and and I think providing them with a memory you know we all have the memories of the science fair when we were in elementary and middle school and mm -hmm. high school and um, having them come and and make those memories is advantageous as well but it, it supports our mission to uh, support sciences um, with our Yellowstone Science and Allied Health Building, just wrapping up funding for that, as well as our participation hosting uh, Girls in Science and other STEM events on campus. Right. Well, and you, you've mentioned STEM a couple of times, and can you touch a little bit just on why that's important for kids in our, not just our community, but anywhere, to, to be able to, to learn those things starting at an early age? I think the critical thinking part of it is spectacular. Mm -hmm. I've had an opportunity now, as I've entered the projects into the system, um, I, I kind of giggled with somebody the other day, there's a lot of slime involved, a lot of bubbles, a lot of petri <laughs> dishes with the little ones, but there are some adaptive things that are going on too. Somebody's building a splint that helps you swim better, and, and there's robotics, I mean, and then there's the artistic side of it. But when you bring those young minds together, and it's so important in this world, especially today at the rapid pace that we're at, right. and you give them a... Um, because everything is set up so they, they have their, their idea and then they have to show what they did with that idea and the critical thinking that goes into place and then what mm -hmm. the outcome is. When you start that in the first grade and then I have looked at some of the senior high projects that are looking, oh my gosh, I had to look up the words when I was putting it in. <laughs> I couldn't, I'm really not sure what this one project does, but it has to do with cell biology and, and um, the different systems. And to see that when you think a little first grader who's looking at maybe the germs in a rabbit and a, and a cat. I have one, a mm -hmm. rabbit, a cat, and what did I say was the other one? Three animals, and they're growing. Oh, well, who has the most bacteria in the mouth? And then you go to the other side, littler, littler, and looking at the cell division, you, you start somewhere. Mm -hmm. and, and that first grader who gets that positive experience is where it starts. Well, and that speaks a lot to the diversity that's involved with this particular right. event too, Vonda. So there are 22 different categories and it really opens up students' minds uh, with their creativity because there's a category for literally any discipline and science that somebody's interested in from mm -hmm. pet and uh, animal and plant sciences all the way to robotics and uh, intelligent machines. So it, it really is a lot of... Um, diverse minds kind of coming together for the sciences as well. Sure, and these these are all also things that, you know, as, as these kids grow up, as they continue their education, you know, a lot of these things can define what you do as an adult, and these are all really important things to know because STEM, you know, I mean, that, that drives technology, that drives That's building, right. it, it, it just applies to so many things across the board, mm -hmm. so I think getting kids in early um, and excited about that and, and, and following and tracking those things is really important or down the road too. I kind of equated it to my memories as a, when I w first became involved in this, I remember winning a broad jump in the third grade. Mm -hmm. I have a positive memory of that experience and was kind of an athlete all the way through college. Mm -hmm. And if you do that at that, that level with a scientific inquiry mind and you put that same positive thought in there, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Who knows? Where, well, they'll be the people that'll be on the moon. Obviously, they'll be on Mars. <laughs> They're going to be those people that are out there, or maybe the ones that are calculating the machines that send them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's exciting to be involved with all these little little projects and and see where they could go with it. Yeah. Sure. Well, and, and so speaking of these projects, can you kind of walk us through, you know, that, that process for students, you know, what they're, what it takes to, to put this project together, what they do to get it 
on the floor at the Science Expo. Well, this is a kind of a poster fair, so it's like a vendor fair that you might see at a medical show. Mm -hmm. So they, they do their projects at home, and sometimes it's a science teacher that helps them with that. Sometimes it's the parent that helps with that. Then they, they write out their project and the outcomes of that project. They put all the information on a poster. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there might be a, a demonstration there. Um, we're, we're pre um, careful on what we allow into the gym. Yeah. So we're, we we do look at everything that they're bringing into the gym. So mostly it's on a on a poster, so that when their judges come up and and I found out that that she was a judge, um, <laughs> they can defend their dissertation, so to speak, but they can give answer to why they came to the conclusion that they came to. And so all those forms are on our website at MSU Billings, and then you go to the Science Expo, okay. so they can print those off this year and get them over to me, or they sent them in to me, and um, next year hopefully we'll get that all online so they can do it online as well. Sure. So we won't have that little... Um, uh, only one way of getting it handled. Um, so I think you as a judge can maybe speak to a little bit of that side of it because I've never really been the judge side of it. So Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I had the pleasure of being a judge last year and it was my first time I'd participated in science fairs as, as I was an adolescent as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I was excited about getting to see some projects and also putting a lot of focus on scientific scientific theory um, mm -hmm. and you'll all of our registrants have been given tip sheets on how to make sure their boards are error free well thought out mm -hmm. that their hypo hypothesis presents an idea that might not have been explored by them and and encourages them um, in that critical thinking but also in that creative thinking mm -hmm. and so as a judge it's great to see everything from our, our little ones talking about their really simple projects all the way up to some exceptionally well thought out advanced science projects mm -hmm. and you're you're looking for the students to be able to like like Vonda touched on speak to their scientific method speak to why they come up with the idea mm -hmm. um, deliver that presentation very eloquently uh, talk about we want to see the excitement in their eyes yeah. of course and before they even get to that point when you know before they put them on the tables at the expo, are there steps that they need to follow at home in in creating their project? Is there is there a process that they have to there follow? Is. There is, and, and that is in the uh, packet when mm -hmm. they print that packet out. So there's five, like the elementary, there's five specific questions. Mm -hmm. So you state you state your um, um, project, and then you go through the different steps mm -hmm. um, to defend that project and your outcome. You state actually what you think is the outcome first, and then you go through and you try to prove that outcome. Mm -hmm. And it may not be the outcome that you put in the very beginning, <laughs> yeah. as, as you know from high school research <laughs> yeah. papers, how that works. It may not work at the end, but <laughs> but basically it's very simple for the, the um, elementary grade school kids to do. Mm -hmm. um, as you get into the senior high, those packets get more more um, complicated mm -hmm. and usually those are typed out almost like a dissertation um, to, fit, to defend what their um, project is, is all about and defend the uh, reasoning that they used for the conclusion that they came to. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to bring up the fact that um, it takes a lot of volunteers, it takes a lot of judges mm -hmm. um, to do this uh, the right way. We need three, the, every every project is judged three times and we take those scores and they go into uh, a program and then that's how we determine uh, the winners in mm -hmm. part in some of those areas. So to do that we need about 200 judges and right now I have a database going, you can register to be a judge mm -hmm. even if you haven't done it before, um, we will have a training before you start your judging and we'll feed you a free meal <laughs> and you get your training and um, you can go to the MSU Billings uh, website, go to the Science Expo and there is a um, 
judge's registration page. And so okay. just fill that out. I get that information. I can enter you on the backside. But uh, it we, we really do. I'll take judges up to the day before. Okay, so yeah. I mean, up and right until yep. before. Yes. You'll be, Absolutely. And, yes. And how many total judges are, are there for this? You may have said that already. The, but... Yeah, they usually have between 200 and 250. Okay. And I'm right now, like I said, about 80, 83. The last time I checked, it's been mm -hmm. a couple of days. So we're well below what we needed. And I think part of the the issue might be this year, and I want to make this really um, uh, this claim that this is happening this year. Mm -hmm. I think that we got such a late start. There was some decision at the very beginning whether it would happen again this year, but uh, Bill Kennedy at the foundation stepped up and said, "Yeah, we're going to take this yeah. on and going to make sure this happened." It's happening. Yeah, this year. it is it's happening. happening. <laughs> so we need, uh, and I, I, you know, tell them and they will come. Mm -hmm. Marietta keeps telling me who's who's ran this. Uh, for the last eight years to 15 years that you let it out there they will come mm -hmm. so um, please go to the website and register if you're interested to be a judge sure well and, and with the judges I, I know that you know the, their main duty is obviously to to evaluate these projects uh, but but for them when they come in you know what what do you think that they they're able to take away at the end of the day as well because you know I think that it's it's an important thing to be involved in and and I think that everybody is able to to take something away other than hey I judged yeah some, mm -hmm. some projects. Tiffany I'm gonna put that back in your court. <laughs> yeah because you've done this. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I did have have that experience last year and I do want to point out first that um, you know don't be uh, don't be overwhelmed by the idea that you haven't judged before. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to be an expert in a science or another STEM field mm -hmm. to be a judge and, and to make a difference in, in these kids' lives. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that going in and getting to look at the enthusiasm and look at the hard work that these students have put in, at the end of the day, you know that you made a really a real difference yeah. in, in their pursuit of STEM, mm -hmm. in their interest in the sciences, in their confidence level and that's a really important one too because mm -hmm. it does take a lot of confidence on their part to present to strangers mm -hmm. yeah. and, and talk about their hard work. So yeah. I, I would say that that's the most fulfilling part of what I experienced having judged last year. Okay. Well, and you know, for these judges that come in, without going into too much detail, can we get a little sneak peek at some of the kinds of projects that they might see? What have you guys seen through registration so far? Oh my gosh. I have seen just about everything. <laughs> There's I, a lot. I, I, there, it, it, that might involve Kool-Aid. I know it, <laughs> it has, they have, the little ones have um, a lot of bugs. They're really mm. interested in bugs. So there might be some Petri dishes. A uh, little bit of mold, although I'm a little suspicious. I have to kind of keep my hand on the mold that they're growing. Um, and and uh, again, the bacteria is kind of a big deal. Um, uh, comparisons, there's a lot of comparisons. There's mm -hmm. two or three projects have to do with cookies, yep. what makes the best cookies. So they're using different ingredients in cookies. Then you get up to the junior high and you're moving more into a mathematical uh, reasoning. And there seems to be a big difference between maybe the, uh, the fifth graders and the seventh graders, obviously. There's a little different reasoning there. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of joke, though, the handwriting is the same. <laughs> and so it, 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 uh, it is still interesting. They're still doing uh, a lot of their handwriting of their projects. Um, that, that age group, too, I've seen projects come through where they're doing more of the adaptive. Um, they're maybe looking at how do you swim faster and how can we make you run faster and does this type of ski make you run or does this mm -hmm. bat hit faster if we do this to it. So you see a little bit more of the mechanics. Then when I get into the senior high, um, there's fewer projects. Mm -hmm. But some of those are continuation projects. So maybe they started something last year and they're continuing that research into the next year. Yeah. So they have different conclusions. So that's kind of exciting to see that as mm -hmm. well. But they're looking more, it, those are more detailed, more scientific, more microbiology, maybe more chemical, um, more robotics. Mm -hmm. um, I know that there was just a uh, science fair up, up on the high line and I, I actually saw it on the news where the winning project Project was a, a robot that actually does things and these kids built this robot. I'm trying to get them down here so they could have that at the show here but um, and that's senior high level again so yeah. they're actually building machines that can do specific things. Mm -hmm. So some of these projects get pretty advanced as the, as the yes. kids age. I mean it's, yes. it's things that probably even some of us 
aren't able to do. I mean, there's there's Absolutely. some smart kids doing some pretty impressive things here. And that's what we're looking for at that level because mm -hmm. we want that one winter or maybe it's a, a group of students that have gone together so we can yeah. get them to represent us um, in um, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in May. That'll be the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair, and so that's the big prize. These um, high school senior division experiments are, they, they're, it's getting more competitive, mm -hmm. you know, so, so they definitely, we see more advanced um, projects in the, that grade level, and uh, to compete at a national level, they really need to be very well thought out. So, yeah. so we see those, and they're competing for that all expenses paid yeah. trip to Pittsburgh. So that's that's going to be very exciting yeah. for them. Yeah. Well, and, and along those lines, whether it's high school students or grade schoolers, what is it that makes a good project? You know, what are what are judges looking for in in a good project? And I know that's kind of a broad question because it's mm -hmm. going to vary. But but what are some of the things that that run through the the the, the really good projects? Well, every student did receive that, that registered did receive a 15 tips for success mm -hmm. sheet, and and a lot of what they'll see on there is. Um, you know, making sure that their projects are error free, making sure that judges aren't expected to spend 15 minutes trying to read them. So mm -hmm. uh, too little information or too much information on a project um, will make your yours not stand out as well. Um, you should be able to read them from a couple feet away, so mm -hmm. everything should be legible and clear. Um, and then, of course, in your own presentation of your work. So judges are certainly going around and they're evaluating the, the, the projects themselves and the boards that these students have put together, but every student needs to be able to speak to their experiment eloquently, get excited, show their enthusiasm behind their project. Okay. Um, well, you know, and, and so with, with that in mind, for the kids presenting, what do you think they get out of presenting to the judges? Uh, sometimes maybe some complete strangers who are, are looking at some work that they've put a lot of effort into. What do the kids get out of that experience, do you think? Well, I think you said it right there. <laughs> they've put in a lot of work, mm -hmm. and sometimes for months as, as huge projects undergone with their uh, their leadership of their instructors, the help of their parents, of course. So um, there is a, a long process that goes into bringing a project to fruition for this fair, mm -hmm. uh, for this expo. And so I think that for the most part, they're getting out the big confidence boost mm -hmm. again. They're getting out um, their enthusiasm for, for their science field, for STEM. They're looking to this as a reaffirmation of sorts, right. I would yeah. say, for their interests and their abilities in STEM and to uh, consider it as a career field as well. So especially in those upper grade levels, they're thinking about college and they're, they're thinking about what to do as a career and we can reinforce those ideas with this expo, I'd say. Okay. I think the energy that you get at this, this science expo um, needs to be uh, thought about too. Just <laughs> bringing, uh, somebody said, what do you, what is it like when you go in? I think it's like a beehive of activity <laughs> yeah, when you yeah. go in. So the energy level is is there. So it's exciting. It's mm -hmm. like going to the Super Bowl, you know, for the little ones. It's yeah, like, it it's, it's, it's a very exciting, and the, and the entertainment factor cannot be mm -hmm. dismayed. I mean, you can't put that aside. Yeah. So to be part of something that big in that community, I, I we're in Billings, but this uh, health expo uh, is county driven mm -hmm. so we have uh small schools being represented and you put them in the gym at MSUB and you put them with 300 participants and 200 judges and maybe another 150 volunteers, mm -hmm. the excitement and the energy, um, they'll have that in their mind forever. Yeah. And that yeah. doesn't even count because other people can come and check right. this out too. It Parents, is open to the public. Classmates, yes. public, whoever it might be. And so there's, there's yeah. a lot of different groups, people in there all at the same time right. buzzing around, checking things out. Yeah. On top of, you know, you like you mentioned some of the other um, demonstrations, those kinds of things that yep. are going on. Absolutely. Um, and, and kind of along the lines of, you know, what else they might be able to take home, can you talk a little bit about, you know, kind of the, the prizes or, or what, what the winners, what, what's, what's there for winners? I know we mentioned the, the trip for the, for the higher level. What else, you know, I guess on that podium, what, what else is there? 
Well, as, as Vonda said, you know, this is a 24 county event. School, mm -hmm. About 70 schools are represented here. So we got a lot of support from our community and mm -hmm. thanks to our generous donors, you know, the registration fee for students to participate mm -hmm. was actually free. So oh, that yeah. says a lot about how much the community supports the Science Expo mm -hmm. and these students coming together. Um, but they're going to be able to expect uh, upwards of $19,000 in prizes yeah. altogether. So it's huge for them. Everything from certificates of merit to scholarships to um, gifts that have been given. So there's a lot of uh, diversity, I'd say, and, and what's available for students to win. And we, we try to make sure as many people get to walk home with a prize as possible. Sure. Plus, you get that certificate that yeah, you can take that, home. And I know people that, says, that still have those this, on their wall. Right? Yeah, when they're, you know, they're oh, in their 20s sure. or 30s. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. it, and that serves as part of what makes it a memory. And I know we had a, 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 f a few really exceptional donors who really are responsible for making this happen. Yes. And that's Billings Clinic, of course, and Montana State University Billings, but also Color 8 and the Billings Gazette, Exxon Mobil, Sabanier Stillwater, a ton of different mm -hmm. industrial and professional organizations from all over this 24 county region. Sure. So. And that, that's everything from monetary support to organizational Absolutely. support. Right. To volunteers to whatever it might be you there's bet. there's so it's not just you know one or two organizations mm. this is bringing in people from all yes. over our, not just our community but kind of the surrounding region to yeah, if they're not participating they're helping yeah in it, some way yeah. Th this is not a money money making um, expo sure. this this is something that we um, made sure going in that we covered our expenses and that 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 the, the sponsorship money is used wisely mm -hmm. and that every student has that opportunity to come without a cost yeah, and, and make it that type of an event and we couldn't do it I, just an example Exxon has donated the Metra um, bulletin board for us out there at the Metra Park so they it's not a bulletin board I'm sorry what is it called the Metra uh, but it's board. Like some, some yeah. signage. Some yeah, signs yeah. Through. So they're going to have yeah. our, our information out there. And mm -hmm. um, he's been so generous. Um, Dan Carter yep. at Exxon has been so generous to make sure. And he sits on our advisory council as well. So they're not only just involved in making sure that this event happens, they're involved in the planning of the event Wonderful. and making sure that, that our needs are taken care of and the students' needs, the projects are, are going to happen. Great. Yeah. Absolutely. And so we're, we're running out of time here. So I want you to be able to, to give one last kind of rundown of the details, uh, where people can get more information, uh, when this is happening, where it's going to be at. Just just the, the basics one more time, so you know, so anybody watching can can attend or Absolutely. get involved. So again, this is the Science Expo. Mm -hmm. It is taking place March 23rd and 24th. Uh, students will start arriving at about 1 p.m. the 23rd. Uh, it is actually open to the public, so um, part of what makes this exceptional is, is getting the public support out there. So on Saturday, um, the 24th, we want to we get everybody in that gymnasium, come show your support for your students uh, or the people that you know and, and see what great work they've put into putting, getting this expo together. So again, the 23rd and 24th, we are still looking for judges. judges yes. Go to msubillings.edu forward slash science expo. Mm -hmm. So that's where you'll you'll find your registration forms to become a judge or a volunteer. It's where you can learn more about the schedule as well as uh, additional information about the event. Yes.